Hey friends, it's Whiskit. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to edit photos using Affinity Photo and completely remove or at least lessen shadows specifically in portraits. Now, I've seen a lot of different people on the internet go about this in various different ways. And most of the time they work, sometimes they don't work so well and I kind of wonder what the point of the tutorial is. But in today's video, I at least wanna show you my method, which usually gets the job done pretty well and gives you a lot more creative control. Now, for those who have been following me on Instagram and uh, some of my YouTube shorts, I've been teasing a little project where I'm gonna show you how to relight 2D images using a couple of different AI tools and Affinity Photo as well. But that's not this video. That's probably gonna be coming up next. I've just been super flat out. haven't really had time to sit down and make it yet. That and I've been having way too much fun with stable diffusion and hopefully that'll be something for another video down the track. This is a fairly good precursor for that relighting video that we're going to be doing later. Um, it's not completely necessary, but I just felt like this one was a really good one to quickly throw in there, um, just because I haven't really seen many people go about editing photos this specific way on YouTube. I've watched a lot of different tutorials and most of the time it's just sort of messing around with the curves or um, sort of making a fake HDR image out of like several exports of the same image. This isn't that. Um, you'll see what it's all about. So yeah, without any further ado, let's jump in and get started. Okay, so here we are in Affinity Photo and I've just gone ahead and pulled up a stock image from pexels.com. So images like this are relatively easy to work with because there aren't a lot of extremely hard shadows on her face. There is like this sort of line going down her nose, but I think that we're gonna be able to get a pretty decent result out of this one. So first up, I'm gonna to go to the adjustment panel here and we're going to add a curves adjustment. Now we could just sort of, um, you know, pull up uh, all of the highlights or pull them down and whatnot. But what we're actually gonna do in this case is use the picker tool down here. And I'm just gonna select um, any part of the shadow, probably this one because it's kind of the most obvious. I'm going to click and drag upwards. And we're just going to brighten that shadow region. Now, obviously, this isn't ideal because it's also brightened our highlights as well. So what we'll do is with the curves adjustment layer selected, we'll click this little mask layer button down the bottom here. Now, that should automatically select the mask layer. And we're going to press Control i on our keyboard to invert the mask. So now we shouldn't be able to see what this curves adjustment is doing at all. Next up, we'll go to the paintbrush tool. And in the brushes panel, we'll select uh, probably basic and just go down to this bottom brush, a nice big soft brush that we can play around with the size. Now we need to make sure that our color is switched over to white. So basically what we've set up here is this mask is invisible and the only visible parts of it are going to be these white areas that we paint in. And if we hover over, we can see that some of that shadow is lifting. Now, you don't have to be too um, careful with this. Like obviously try to be like a little bit, but you know, I'm just using a mouse to pull this off. And um, yeah, because we're gonna use a couple of other features afterwards, just to sort of alleviate some of the crossover. Cause obviously if we paint on the highlights, things get really blown out. Awesome. So now we wanna make sure that none of this is affecting our highlights in any kind of way. So what we'll do is click on the curves adjustment layer and I'm gonna press control G to group it. So basically now anything we do to this group is going to be applied to the curves adjustment layer and mask that we have inside of it. Up the top here, we've got this little gear icon in the layers panel and that says blend ranges. So if we select that, move it over to the side, this allows us to choose if we want uh, like the shadows to be part of this layer or the highlights not to be part of it. It's kind of like a curves control, but just working with the shadows and highlights um, of the layer, allowing them to be transparent or not. So we'll use this underlying composition ranges tool and I'm going to drag the right hand side all the way down and you can see what that's doing is getting rid of this effect being applied on any of the highlights. If 
if we were to do this from the left hand side, it gets rid of it on the shadows, which is not what we want. So we'll pull this down to the highlights. And if we actually drag this all the way across, you can see like a really sort of sharp preview of this effect being applied. We could bring the shadows over even more. And just to give like a bit more of a visual representation, if we move these really close together, we can kind of see what's happening here. So we want like a nice soft transition. Something about there will do. So this is actually already looking pretty good if we toggle this on and off. We can see that we've knocked out a lot of those shadows. But in other images where there's hard shadows or a lot of wrinkles and things like that, uh, it's not going to be so easy. And even in this image, we've still got like a few hard shadows. Like we can definitely tell that one side of her face has been edited. So let's go through a couple of other steps to help clean things up a little bit. So I'm going to shift select both of these layers and press Control, Alt, Shift and E. Basically, that just flattens and rasterizes our image into a new layer. So we actually don't even need these on anymore. We're just working with a flattened version of that image. So now what we'll do is go to filters and frequency separation. So frequency separation is really awesome. Basically what it allows you to do is separate the high frequency amounts of detail from the low frequency amounts of detail. Now, there's a few different settings down here, um, mainly with the method. We can pick between Gaussian, bilateral, and median. So these are types of blurs. So over on the right-hand side here, we can see that the image is using a Gaussian blur. And if we were to increase this, uh, it gets really, really blurred out. Now, the problem with this is if you look over onto the left-hand side here, we can see that we're getting a little bit of haloing around the edges, and we don't really want that. You could try it bilateral, which is uh, a little bit better, but definitely sort of smooths out things in like a grainy kind of way. What I'm going to use is median down the bottom here. And what we want to look for here is we want the details of her face to be present, but we don't really want any of the color information bleeding through. So we can see that her lips here look a little red, um, her eyelid here is sort of bleeding out a little bit yellow. It's not too important um, for this particular thing that we're doing today to get this like spot on. Um, but what I'm really looking for is probably something around this range. So we'll hit apply. Great, so now what that's done is output two different layers. We have a high frequency layer and a low frequency layer. So just to give you a quick rundown of how this is going to work, as a really, really extreme example, uh, something we could try doing is, it's gonna look really weird maybe, um, we'll select the low frequency layer and just using a healing brush, I'm just going to kind of erase her lips. Great. So yeah, super weird, but essentially what we're looking at here is it's kept the, um, you know, sharp details of her mouth, but on the low frequency layer, we've kind of just erased all of the um, sort of details and kind of blended them together. I hope that that makes sense. So let's undo that for now because we kind of don't want her lips going anywhere. What we're going to be using this for is with the low frequency layer selected, uh, and maybe we'll toggle off the high frequency layer. I'm looking for these sort of hard shadowy areas like around the nose here, uh, a couple of lines here, and I basically just want to soften them out. So there's a bunch of different ways that you could do this. Uh, I usually start with the healing brush. We'll just select a point nearby and just slowly start getting rid of some of those details. You don't have to be too uh, precise with this either. This is kind of the beauty of doing it this way because a high frequency layer isn't going to be affected. So we're actually going to like 
um, blur and smudge a lot of this later on to get the effect that we want. You could try different things too, like the uh, in-painting brush to get rid of some of these sort of clunky areas that the healing brush is making. Just things like that. We will do that down here around the edge of the nose. I kind of sharpened it up, so we'll switch back to the healing brush. Select an area nearby, just sort of soften that out. And we're just going to rinse and repeat with this method for a little while. Great, so if we turn our frequency layer back on, we can see that a lot of those hard shadows are starting to disappear and it's starting to look really, really good. Something else you might want to try, um, and I'll, I wouldn't go too heavy handed on this because it might not look uh, so visible when you're zoomed all the way in, but when you zoom out, you'll start to really notice that this effect gets a little bit weird. But we can use the smudge tool over here and just start sort of smudging different areas on the low frequency layer together. This can be really useful for just sort of getting that nicer blend um, between some of these more speckledy kind of areas. I'm just going in really light with all of this, nothing too crazy. Just try to keep in mind, like, you don't want to go too heavy handed with this because um, the more shadows that you're removing, like the less definition you're going to be getting in the face. So we definitely want to keep some of that definition. We're just trying to sort of knock it back a little bit so that it looks more like it's lit from the front. Cool. So that's working pretty good so far. Um, normally I'd probably try and spend a little bit more time on it, um, but you know, I think it's getting the job done. Maybe we'll just sort of uh, flatten out around her nose this tiny little bit. All right, so what I'm gonna do is shift select these three layers and group them by um, pressing Control Shift G. And if we toggle this on and off, this is the result so far. So one other thing that we might want to try and do just to sort of flatten things out a tiny bit more is we're going to use another curves adjustment layer. This time we'll use the picker and just select uh, this highlight in particular because it's pretty full on um, and maybe we'll drop it down here a little bit too just trying to kind of flatten that out slightly uh, there's a bunch of different ways that you could do this you could use the select color tool but we're going to do it this way uh, we'll group that just like we did at the start and we're going to apply a mask to the curves adjustment invert that with control i and we'll switch to a white brush and let's just paint over some of that highlighted region. I mean, we could have technically done this ourselves on the um, uh, curves, uh, sorry, on the frequency separation step. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna do it this way for now. See how it turns out. We can always go into the curves here and kind of reapply this effect a little bit better. Great, so we can see that we're getting a bit of haloing because this is now affecting uh, the rest of the skin tone. So with this group, we're going to select the blend ranges and we just wanna make sure that it's not affecting the shadows of the layer below. Just wanna find like a nice even ground. Yeah, it seems to be about there. Again, if we weren't happy with this, we could shift select these, uh, flatten the whole thing out, turn off these other layers, and then once more use frequency separation, like the exact same method as before. And we could just go into the low frequency section, maybe use the healing brush here, and just kind of Stamp some of that highlight out a little bit. 
you could do this on the other highlights too if you're like uh, being really pedantic about it but this is just meant to be a quick example and I have a feeling it's going on a little bit too long so far um, we might also need to do that to the high frequency layer um, no seems to be pretty decent great so uh, we'll group that one more time and toggling this on and off this is the end result So yeah, I mean, that's like definitely a way that you can go about uh, relighting a portrait in Affinity Photo. It takes a little bit of time. It's not as sort of automatic, but you do get a lot of creative control over how things are going to work. One thing you might find with this method uh, is that sometimes some of the colors, uh, because, you know, kind of brightening areas and whatnot, tend to get a little bit lost. So what I like to do is just add in a curves adjustment uh, we'll switch to the red channel and maybe we'll just um, increase just from the middle a tiny bit of red. If we wanted it to be a tiny bit more yellow, we could also just add in a touch of green, something like that. So now it's a little bit more golden, but obviously we don't want that applied to the whole image. So, you know, you just um, mask that layer out, invert the mask with control I again and use the paintbrush tool to just sort of um, paint on some of that more yellow area. So now her face doesn't look as washed out. Um, looks a lot nicer. Toggling that on and off. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that result. Uh, I think it turned out looking pretty decent. Uh, if we toggle that on and off, there's the before and there's the after. If you wanted to take this one step further, like obviously we're trying to make this look like it's lit from the front. So you might even go in and um, start applying like a little bit more of a shadow effect just around the perimeter of her face because there is no backlight behind her right now. Um, just something to keep in mind if you really wanted to sort of go all out with this one and don't forget like all of these things are just adjustment layers so we can select that uh little yellow tint that we applied um, and just sort of increase it slightly so it's only there a little bit which yeah i think looks a little bit more natural than the um full one all right that's all i have time for today uh sorry that there's been a little bit of a break in between content i've been absolutely flat out with a lot of other work projects and um my year is slowly sort of dwindling down to a cruisier year so um, i'm hoping over this holiday break i might have a lot more time to spend doing this fun stuff for all of you guys anyways hit the like if you like and if you don't tell me why check me out on patreon and uh yeah i'll see you in the next one cheers